Hi all, I have an absolutely fascinating new course to show you at Chessable with a peek inside. Formatic Tactics Benko Gambit by Martin Voigt and Dirk Sebastian, two very strong players. And they basically make the key point that you best amplify your knowledge in openings and structures by internalizing common tactical motifs. So that's a really, really interesting point made for these thematic uh, tactical books within a certain opening. Let's browse the chapter structure. So there's 16 chapters, simple tactics, endgame, A and B files. Let's get in there and have a look. Uh, so a simple tactic here. I'll give you two seconds if you want to pause the video. One elephant, two elephants. Okay. Bang, bishop takes c3. That queen is overloaded. Okay, hope you got that one. Let's have a look at another. So here, simple tactic, well, the f pawns moved. Ah, the dreaded f pawn move, the diagonal of death, bishop d4. Uh, so that's a cool uh, one. Let's have a look here. Oh, okay. It looks a little bit trickier. Is the queen overloaded? I would say, if I give you two seconds, I'd say it might be. So bishop f5. I'm going to try and overload that queen. Bang, bishop takes e4. Skewing queen and rook. And we, I think we can safely take here. So there's a nice chapter there. Simple tactics to have a lot of fun with. Look at all of this. And let's go to the chapter list. End game examples. So here, even though we have the situation where a pawn down, sometimes there's tactics now that exist to watch out for because look at that rook. The active rook is often leading to tactics. Bang, rook takes c3. Knight e4 check. That's the thing about the Benko Gambit. Often the pressure persists towards end games. So being a pawn down is not an automatic loss, basically. Here, active rook, pressure on c4. We have time, yeah, to take this pawn using that active rook as the source of the tactics. Let's have a look again. Go into these chapters. A and B file. So what does it say about the A and B file? So it looks, together with the chapter on the A1 to H8 diagonal, it's probably the most important in the book. So they're basically saying this, I believe, because these are the real trump cards of this opening. Uh, the real assets are playing this opening, the diagonal and the and the A and B files. So it says, um, even some variations where white declines the gamut, black will be getting serious pressure along the A and B files. And pressure leads to tactical opportunity. So let's have a look at what they mean concretely with one or two examples. So here, A and B file pressure. Well, we've actually got a pin pawn. Two seconds, can you see? Yeah, I think the pressure directly leads to this skewering queen and rook, that pin pawn. Let's have a look at another A and B file disaster. Okay, so here, is it so easy? Well, actually, there's a loose piece as well. Don't don't forget the basics of, of chess tactics like loose pieces. We might be able to hit the loose piece, I believe. I don't see anything wrong with queen b4 right now. Uh, that looks a way of celebrating the b-file. Now, I might be wrong. I hope not. Yes, I am wrong. Bishop takes c3. <laughs> okay, bishop takes c3. Okay. Uh, there's a really, really subtle point about this pawn pins, much better than than what I played. So let's have a look. Let's train this. Bishop takes c3. I think, yes, the subtle point is knight b5, hitting c3 and a3. So let's see. If we had played um, queen b4, uh, let's have a look. Queen b4. Actually, there's knight b5, I believe, hitting the queen and protecting the rook. Ah. The nifty knight b5, I missed that point. Okay, uh, so let's go back and try another on the a and b files. Okay, here, yes. Two seconds if you want to pause the video. Okay, <laughs> I think I need more time. Is it bishop takes b5 or knight takes a4? Bishop takes b5 or knight takes a4? Maybe that those are my two top candidates. Or, in fact, I think I see another idea. Uh, I think we can actually play this. Knight takes e4, bang, with ideas of weakening b5. 
we we can b5 slightly we can exploit the pinned pawn again so you get an idea that you know these pinned a pawns are a great source of of tactics which could be winning for you uh so yeah it reinforces the you know the pressure that you have to celebrate the pressure that you have from the benko gambit here it looks as though we want to play knight before but that knight's protecting that at the moment do we play that anyway uh yeah maybe because that rook is that knight is pinned maybe we play this anyway knight b4 so again using that pin pawn is a major point scorer it seems from some of these examples uh, here i think actually stronger than them taking is rook takes c3 the rook would still be hanging and just take him we've got look looking at rook a1 there great stuff so the a and b file celebration basically it's it's basically yes it's basically in a way celebrating what you get as, as a result of playing the Banco Gamut. That's why I think they believe that's a, a really key chapter. That's one of the main trump cards, the MB files, as well as the diagonal. So queen side tactics, even though black is usually pressuring the queen side, uh, sometimes white has tactical ideas there as well. Uh, yeah, we could look at it from a, from, a, from a white perspective, just one maybe, from a white perspective. A uh, little bit biased, yeah. But I think here, okay, I think we're winning material. Not with this because there's rook takes a1, but I think rook b1 and actually we can skewer it. It backfires on black a bit. But let's let's go back to a, a black perspective on these things. Chapter list. Okay, queen side tactics. Actually, the core one which they mentioned, the diagonal, the a1 to h8 diagonal, one of the major trump cards you would get at this opening. Uh, so here, how do we use this diagonal? Fascinating. Uh, bishop takes c3 is a full seam. It doesn't mean doesn't seem to do that much at the moment. Rook takes a3 is crazy. In fact, with the diagonal, what we can do to sort of celebrate this diagonal, I've seen something. Two seconds if you want to pause the video. So celebrating the diagonal this time. Bang. Queen takes b2. I think this celebrates the diagonal big time because the knight's also controlling that b8 square so i think that's a fantastic celebration of that diagonal uh let's have a look here i think that loose rook on a1 is often a problem knight takes e4 i think we can pounce on that loose rook that's going to be brilliant celebration of the diagonal oh let's do one more for luck on this I think here, this is uh, interesting. Uh, I'll give you two seconds. Which is the right way to celebrate the diagonal? Getting the right way is actually really, really important here. And sometimes it does boil, boil down to exploiting loose pieces in the position. So you get the trump cards from the opening, but you've got the mundane, you know, loose pieces, which we're all used to in, in a general sense when solving tactics. But I think here there's a key way with knight takes d5, not knight takes e4. I'll show you why in a, in a moment. Because here there's a loose piece on d3. You can see that bishop d2, there's queen takes d3 here. So, you know, sometimes this does ball dasher is basically you're trying to exploit sometimes loose pieces in the possession. Uh, another one, the diagonal here. Well, this is very interesting. So we've got some pressure on c3. Do we just play queen b4 here? Is this a case where queen b4 might be effective? Because bishop d2, I think we can snap that off. And also we're looking forward to forking both rooks. Uh, sort of mundane tactic at that level but we are celebrating that beautiful benefit of the Banco and Gamut. It seems I would go for Queen B4. You might want two seconds here. Okay I'm going to go for Queen B4 myself. It may be wrong. I hope not. Okay I think on this occasion Queen B4. Ah! Queen takes C3. Queen takes C3. Not Bishop takes C3. Bishop takes C3 as it mentions here. Bishop D2. Oh, the knight's protecting d2. We must play queen takes c3. Okay, and we're hitting the queen, we're hitting the rook. It's a real double attack. Yes, the essential double attack, uh, often an ingredient. So that's queen takes c3. And then we've got this. Okay, and that's very, very strong. Okay, so that's uh, that diagonal. And if we look at the informational, just to get the concept here, this is what they consider the most important chapter of the book. So this really is, you know, the trump card, one of the major trump cards of the opening leads to this pressure on this diagonal combined with the pressure on the B file. It amplifies the pressure on the diagonal. 
So Black's main trump in the Benko, knowing all the tactical ideas connected with the G7 bishop is imperative for the Benko player and net you a lot of easy points in tournament play, as it mentions. So it's a really fantastic uh, concept that the book has that it's really, it's getting you to celebrate the trump cards of the opening. So here, knight takes e4 is tempting. Is that the idea? We, we might be able to try it because actually the king is in the center as well. So there's a king safety liability as well here. But I believe this might be the approach. Can you see why? I hope you can. Uh, bishop takes e4. I believe bishop takes b2 will be a killer blow here for knight d3 check. Crash. So using that diagonal. I, this this is actually one of my favorite chapters <laughs> using this diagonal. But there are actually... Um, Okay, rook takes b3 or knight takes rook takes b5 or knight takes f3 spring to mind immediately. I, I think what we can do is leave basically a loose piece. If we take here, we can take here and leave a loose piece, piece on a1, and then we can exploit the pin. So you can see how the b and a files really amplify the diagonal. Uh, the potential for disaster for white is absolutely maximized when these two come together like this. I think that's the, the points that the excellent authors are making. Okay, I, I, I'll tear myself so if, uh, <laughs> away for that. Kingside attack by black. Sometimes they've made a note actually that you can sometimes transfer your queenside pieces quite rapidly to the kingside. It says, although black plays mainly on the queenside in Benko, there are often chances for a direct assault on the king. So uh, get your king's crushing skills out. The most important idea to look out for is to transfer your heavy pieces to the kingside via the queenside side a rook on the first second or third is often deadly for the white king and and a lot of but with tactical methods they're often faster when you play uh, strong tactics they're often faster than normal methods so here how do we transfer our queen over here well if i give you two seconds i think we can get on the king side here with rook takes a4 and then we can exploit that pin and this is very nasty indeed so there are mechanisms to get to the king if you like attacking the king. It's not all about the, the queen side pressure. So here, how do we get to the king? Well, I think we've got to transfer this somehow over here. The queen's a bit overloaded. I think we can play c4. And then we can transfer, get, you know, big threats going now after rook b2. So that's a great one. Uh, one more here. It's a lot of fun getting. Now, this really intrigued me. Uh, Actually, I did a bit of prep for this video, actually. And to me, there were some fundamental points I'm kind of missing from my understanding of the Benko Gambit. And it's this bishop. It's not just the diagonal. There's another diagonal as well. There's an incredible, spectacular undermining resource here, which shocked me. And it, it occurs actually quite frequently in some of the examples in this book. Can you spot it if I give you two seconds to pause the video? You might want to take longer to find it. It's really quite incredible. Okay. Bishop h6 undermines white structure tactically. Yeah, the bishop pops out, pops out to h6. I know with all this emphasis on this diagonal, but you might be missing the resource on this diagonal. Uh, so fantastic. We can put in a check now and be a piece up. This is a, often a fantastic resource. I've noticed that to undermine the structure here, you know, bishop h6, and there's also in other examples ways of undermining white's pawn chain in a spectacular ma manner. I think it's it's something in the nature of the Benko gamut that undermining uh, plays a key role of things. So how do we get to the king side here? This is a beautiful idea here. If I give you two seconds to pause the video. Okay, how do we transfer these guys? Rook takes g3 opens up, I believe. Uh, we can go now with queen c2 to make way for the rook to use b3. And now here, we're not getting immediately mated. So I believe we do have time for rook b2. And that is uh, a glare against white's king safety. That's tearing white to shreds there. Okay. So yeah, you can even get attacks as this demonstrates. Uh, so great stuff. Miscellaneous is beautiful stuff. Absolutely beautiful stuff. They say that uh, exercise of typical and additional combinations which deem beautiful. So let's have a look at one or two of these. Okay, so here. Okay, this looks a little bit tricky, but I might have given you a clue at, within the last few minutes for this fantastic resource which undermines White's position. If I give you two seconds to pause the video, what would you play here? 
it really does undermine white's position okay bishop h6 yes trying to lure the queen away from e1 it's crushing if f4 i think we just take on f4 We're trying to lure the queen away from e1 beautiful stuff let's have a look at uh one or two more okay here okay i think here there's oh a very juicy idea remember there's a loose piece on e1 and the benko can really get you to exploit these loose pieces in spectacular ways so two seconds here okay bishop d3 and we're going to have a fork a lovely fork to get that e1 to hit the queen and we still got our gigantic pressure on the c file so b1 could be exploited soon as well say so queen d2 bishop takes c3 bang b1's a problem so fantastic tactic there uh and here okay this looks uh quite sophisticated but again this bishop h6 i believe crops up crops up here because we're putting uh, uh the rooks awkwardly for a nice juicy knight fork okay so uh this is just a huge amount of fun i think i've had the most fun preparing for any course so far because i love the benko as a, a weapon of choice especially for blitz chess uh, bullet chess but also it works in ordinary time controls i remember michael wilder an american gm playing at lloyd's bet masters of a benko gambit game i was spellbound by, by by on the demo board uh, the benko gambit games often make a vivid impression on me magnus colson with the benko gambit we've got some fantastic videos on the king's crusher channel as well they really are often spectacular games so this is a very very interesting new course at chessable if you want to follow that link there or in the description to find this course and check it out it's really really cool i hope you enjoyed that and do check it out thanks very much